Well, coastal flooding is normally considered mainly a result of uh, high tides and storm surge. But in the southwest, we have a, an additional factor, which is wave run-up. One thing we, we discovered, that particularly on, on gravelly type beaches, which are quite um, typical in the UK, that this wave run-up component is absolutely critical. On the east coast, it's tides and storm surge that mainly lead to coastal flooding. In the southwest, yes, tides and storm surge are important, but it's this contribution of these big waves that are absolutely key. So we've been able to use the knowledge gained from our fundamental research and apply it to this coastal flooding model. Through SWEEP, we're trying to enhance the way that we predict flooding uh, caused by storms. And what we're doing is we're trying to incorporate the effects that wave um, energy and wave runup on beaches and coastal structures has in terms of the amount of water that can get over the top. We're at Chesil Beach in the Dorset, and Chesil Beach is probably one of the most spectacular examples of a gravel barrier system. It stretches about 25 kilometres in that direction. It has a height of more than 15 metres above sea level, so it's a, it's a very long, very high feature that's unique in the world. What you're seeing in the footage is those waves running up that steep gravel barrier and um, starting to overtop the gravel barrier and starting to overtop the man-made defences down here as well. Because the waves are so energetic, they can contribute many, many metres to the elevation of the sea during a storm. So rather than the sea being able to reach halfway up uh, a beach or a gravel barrier, those waves might add three, four, five metres onto the elevation of the sea and allow that flooding to reach over the top of the natural or man-made defences. The Environment Agency issue flood warnings and really they're to warn the public about safety hazards at the coast, um, but predominantly they're really to help people who have properties or businesses at the coast to put measures in place to, to prevent that flooding from happening. One of the ways we're going to really improve the forecasting of wave run-up and overtopping hazard is by making uh, models which have much finer resolution, so they increase the granularity of the predictions we have around the coast. So the OWL model at its core has a uh, very fine resolution hydrodynamic and wave model which takes information provided by the Met Office at quite a coarse resolution and it transforms those waves and those water levels into the coast at a very fine resolution. And what that means is that you get information um, within an embayment at multiple points uh, and the model can actually differentiate the wave height on either side of a headland. A really key part of the model is uh, the information we have right at the coast, which is the measurements of the actual profile of the, the beaches and the coastline around the southwest. At the moment, there's 183 locations around the southwest where we have this detailed coastal profile information. So, for example, at some places we have um, vast, sort of flat, sandy beaches, uh, and at other locations we have steep gravel beaches like this one. Um, and we also have those engineered profiles where you've got sea defences, either walls or rock revetments. So when we combine those three different types of formulae together, we get um, the ability to predict wave runup and overtopping on sandy beaches, gravel beaches, and engineered coastal profiles. And that covers the full sort of spectrum of uh, beach types um, that we have in the southwest. We generate three different types of flood warnings. One is a regional forecast that shows the areas in the southwest most likely to be overtopped over the next three days. These warnings are color coded from green, which means sort of no overtopping hazard, to red, which is a severe overtopping hazard. The next is an area forecast that shows the predicted overtopping hazard for specific locations. And also beside that, we give information about the local wave and water level conditions and compare these to the wave buoys and the tide gauges in the area. Finally, we have specific information at each of the coastal profiles about exactly when overtopping might occur and how severe it might be. This detailed level of the forecast demonstrates to what degree the overtopping hazard is caused by wave run-up and how much of it is caused by just tide level or storm surge being particularly high on that day. At the moment, the OWL model generates uh, wave predictions around the coast, and those predictions are um, available to anyone who wants to look at them. They're on the Channel Coastal Observatory website, under the Resources page, and that will give you a three-day forecast of the wave conditions and water levels at a number of locations around the coast. Current flood warning systems in the UK are issued by the Environment Agency and uh, they are quite broad and the current forecasting is very much focused on flooding of properties and we look more at the risk of, of uh, flooding to, to people as well. But we're actually hoping soon to develop a more public platform for that information. So that might be a dedica dedicated Twitter service or it might even eventually be uh, an app which tells you about coastal hazards in the southwest.
We work closely together with the Environment Agency. We have to because we want to generate impact and, and the people that deal with coastal flooding and overtopping and those sorts of things is the Environment Agency. So we've been working very closely together with them. but learned a lot from them as well because it's one thing to have a model and predict things scientifically, but there's another side to that coin, which is actually how do you communicate that to the end users? And that's where they really come in. At a national level, I think it's important to point out that the lessons learned from our work in the Southwest can be transferred and fed into the national forecasting strategy. The notion that waves are an absolute key element in driving uh, coastal flooding in the Southwest, hopefully they will be able to combine our model with the Environment Agency model to add value to their forecasts.